Welcome back to the Marketing Minute Podcast. My name is Jamie, and today I have with you guys Chad from SEO and PPC. Hi, Chad. Hi, Jamie. How Thanks. are you? I'm pretty good. <laughs> so I have a couple questions for you. We can go over um, the SEO part. I know that you wrote an amazing blog post, and you guys have to check that out. It's on our website. I'm going to put the information below or on the side, whenever you're watching this or listening. Um, so basically, in that blog post that you wrote, you're talking about SEO, let's not set it and forget it. It's kind of like the deal that you're talking about, correct? That is correct. Okay. So let's start about, let's talk about that. Like why it's important, why we shouldn't like set it and forget it. Because I know SEO takes time. So walk me through the process of SEO. Why it's so important and why we shouldn't like set it and forget it. So the first thing to remember is that... SEO is, um, it takes about four to six months to actually kick in. Um, you have to wait for the Google algorithm to generate and match uh, what users are actually searching for and then match that with the content on your website. Okay, okay. And um, is that something that you always have to update or is something that you put in, maybe wait a month or so and then go back in or is that a no-no? That is a big no. Okay. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is start out with the foundational. Okay. Um, look up your keywords. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that they're relevant to the content that you have. Mm -hmm. And then once you set those, um, just give it some time. Give it about four to six months and see how they're performing. Okay. And then one thing to keep in mind is later those terms could become irrelevant mm -hmm. um, because there is an ever-changing landscape. You also mentioned something about the ranks on Google. Um, how often we should like maintain that? You were mentioning that it takes six months. I asked maybe to wait a month to go back and update that information. So how often, like you, what? How often you go in into our clients' websites and do your part of the SEO? Like every day, once a week, once a month. The rule of thumb is uh, no earlier than 30 days. Okay, okay. And why is that? Like because of the algorithm is always changing or there's Correct. another reason? You don't want to change a keyword and then uh, change it the next day because okay. you basically hit the reset button on it. Oh, that's that's important to know. So once if I put that information in and I hit the reset button, what happens into Google? Like it's, it starts all over again and then I have to wait six months to see the results? More or less. Yes. Oh my God, it takes a lot of time. So it's, it's kind of like a, an end type of work. Like you have to like literally go in every day and do a little bit of, of whatever. Like you have to include more keywords relevant to the business and such as. What you need to do is research the keywords you are using uh, against uh, um, search volume. Mm -hmm. And search volume is quite simply put how many times somebody else is searching for that exact keyword. Okay. The higher the number usually the better mm -hmm. however for people starting up you don't want to compete against high search volumes you want to use maybe a long tail keyword such as dog teeth cleaning mm -hmm. in a location so oh. if, like your local area you want to search dog teeth cleaning in cincinnati ohio okay this way google will narrow down your targeting search a lot more. Okay, okay, and it can do its magic, amazing. Yeah. Chat, I have another question for you. So I also read in your blog that you're talking about link erosion. So I'm not sure if I follow. Can you explain that to me? Because my area of expertise is social media and all of that stuff, but your area is SEO. So what is link erosion? The first thing I need to explain, uh, when you visit a website, there's external and internal links that mm -hmm. people will click on. It takes them to another area of the website or it takes them outside of the website. Link erosion happens when you click on one of these links and it goes to a dead page, like a 404 uh, error. Yeah. Some common reasons for that is the webmaster that runs that website, uh, they didn't pay their domain fee, mm. um, so basically they get kicked off the domain name that they're on, and then when you click on their link, uh, it goes to a dead page. Mm, that's a big no-no, I guess. Correct. So it's <laughs> a very good idea to, you know, when you do SEO, to be running through the site and just make sure all those links are currently working. Okay. Otherwise, uh, you're just going to have to change them to something else or uh, just leave them out altogether. 
Okay. And, um, okay, that's one part also of SEO that you have to look out about those links and make sure that everything leads to the correct one because I've seen tons of <laughs> wrong things going out. Like if you put, like, let's say you want to bring a client to a contact page, but actually the link goes to maybe the homepage. That's, that's horrible. Right. Chad, what is SEO key optimization? Like, is this something that is relevant also, like we were mentioned before about the link erosion? or it, it's something different, like itself? This could be something different. Uh, earlier I was discussing how you should go in and see how well your keyword is ranking. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, that's, it's based on search volume. Um, there's also, you can look up the search difficulty rating on those. You can visit sites like Ubersuggest. Um, right on there they actually tell you what the volume is and how difficult that keyword is to rank for oh wow like what some, are some examples of that like maybe i don't know lawyers or something i'm sorry what what are some examples of that like what are some words that are really difficult to rank off like maybe lawyers or dog rumors or something like that so simple terms that a user would normally look up like um, auto accident lawyer Oh, those are okay. I get it. Um, and what about how can we utilize that information and make it easier to rank to? Is there any way to do that? The first thing you want to do is look up that keyword and then see if it's, you know, anywhere below 70 difficulty. Mm -hmm. um, if it's anything above that, uh, you might want to long tail that keyword uh, by adding something to it. Like, well, for Maybe example, like, um, auto accident lawyers in your area oh in my area like near me and stuff exactly oh uh, that brings me to another question so when i'm at my home let's say and i have a google home or alexa or whatever if i ask them to like what you're saying um insurance company near me or something like that is that also affect the seo and the link erosion and everything that we've been talking about like is that something that we need to as a client we need to look into it and dedicate time to rank there are you saying just adding near me and then how, how does that affect it? Yes, also, but like if I'm asking Alexa, is that part of your work also to target Alexa, let's say, or to rank for Alexa? I don't know if that makes sense, you know? So as far as I know, Alexa already takes care of that on the back end. Okay. Um, as long as location is turned on, um, it knows where you are and where mm. you're triggering the search from okay. uh, so you don't exactly have to put in the city you live in. Okay, so it's not something that you have to do besides what you're already doing with SEO. Like with Alexa and Echo and all of that, it's also triggering the work that you're doing in SEO, correct? Correct. Okay. There is one exception to that. Oh. Um, you can uh, um, use like a location plugin mm -hmm. that would automatically put in like a 50 mile radius of where the service is. Okay. So for example, a lawn care service might target somewhere like 50 miles around them. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they'll create a plugin or whatever and mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. it's okay it's okay we can edit that out yeah. it's just that it's hard for me to explain because i'm thinking about alexa and echo and all of that because we are aiming towards that type of search yeah but i don't know if your work has to do with that you know it does but it gets it's really complicated okay it, it, yeah should we say that or we should cut yeah. it and just... let's try that one again okay um, i kind of i got into this gravel road and i'm like oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> Chad, so you were mentioning something about the importance of keywords plus the location, right? So why is it important and how can it affect this search engine for our clients or for any client? So for example, someone could do a search outside of a location where the business is offering their services. Mm -hmm. You could end up getting the wrong person um, as a potential client that's searching for, uh, let's say, real estate in Detroit, uh -huh. that person's located in North Dakota. Oh. So one thing you could do is you could set keywords to target a local area. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, any cities around Detroit, 
Uh, you could put in, you know, real estate in whatever city. Uh -huh. In an area, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's really important, and that affects, like, um, the devices that we have our homes, like Alexa, Echo, and all of that. Or, or like you were mentioning before, that is something that we have to create with a plugin, like something extra. Yeah, you could also create a plugin to help narrow down the targeting. Okay, okay, that sounds is is easy to do or it's not easy to do. <laughs> it's not easy to do, but it's not hard to do. <laughs> it's kind of like 50-50? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, that's more understandable. Intermediate. Intermediate. Mm -hmm. So, what are some updates that are coming? Like any Google updates algorithm or something that we need to look forward to or prepare? Yes, actually, we had just got a Google update that kind of cracks down on white hat tactics, uh, such as saturating the keyword you're using all over the content. Mm -hmm. uh, people just do that because the more times they put the keyword in, they think they're going to rank higher. Mm -hmm. and Google is uh, putting a stop to that. Oh, nice. Plus, it makes content look really weird and um, fragmented. Yeah. And when people forcefully insert a keyword into their content it just doesn't sound right so i mean it's good news at the same time because it lets us write valid interesting content without mm -hmm. it sounding dumb okay yeah it's not that repetitive i've been there that i try to rank into some words and then i read the content again and i see that i'm saying the exact same thing all over the plate yeah. it's just it's just horrible <laughs> it, it, it's not recommended um so basically i also read that the content the how we know seo is gonna change completely so let's say if i have a website and it's ranking number one or number two with this new update that means i'm gonna go down or i'm gonna still be on the top or we it, don't know it could go any way depending on what you have for content. Oh God, so we don't yeah. know. So basically just, we yeah, don't know it's yet. It's case by case basis on that. Okay, and that update is already up and running? Yeah. Correct. <gasps> when did it start? Like this month? What About month? Two, two, three weeks ago. Okay, and there's like, something in the horizon that we need to prepare to, or you can tell us? <laughs> well, I'll give you guys a sneak peek on uh, mm -hmm. what could be coming ahead. Uh, Google wants to work on a speech algorithm to help target uh, music searches where you could hum a tune and then uh, your actual song that you were looking for will actually pop up in the search results. Oh, that's amazing. I think that um, Terminator, Skyline, and all of that is coming. <laughs> yep. Oh, my yep. God. We need to be prepared, people. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Chad, for your time, for answering my questions, and for answering our audience questions. Guys, if you have more questions for Chad, for me, or for anybody here at the Atleaf, please leave it, be uh, leave it below. Um, if not, just send us a direct message, call us, email us, you know the drill. Thank you so much again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.